A hologram, of course, is, uh, is not stereoscopic viewing. It has many of the visual cues that go to the brain that say, you are not a photograph, you're not film, you're not a hologram. Um, and it contains more of those visual cues to the brain than any other imaging technique known to man. It is the imaging process that is close to real-world viewing uh, of any of the others. This hologram is made up of a number of uh, tiny squares, or ogles as we call them, and uh, they're holographic pixels. And um, each one of those hogles has um, some information to do with the uh, uh, depth and position of the image. And of course, they each have a value, an RGB value, so that they're calculated out of, uh, out of red, green, and blue. The process of holography um, objects have to be have to hold still within a few 10 billionths of an inch over the exposure time, which may be 30 seconds long. So that's why you see holograms like the saber-toothed tiger here, which uh, is a perfect subject for uh, holography. It's, it's uh, very bright, brightly colored, and, uh, and very, very solid. Digital holography uh, came along when it became clear that we couldn't live with the restrictions of just being able to make holograms of those kinds of objects. So in digital holography, we uh, we create a three-dimensional model in your favorite 3D animation or modeling software. You fly a virtual camera past that scene or object and you record a multitude of two-dimensional scenes. And then uh, here at the Photon League, we use the light valve printer to uh, synthesize all those two-dimensional scenes into what you see here um, as a three-dimensional object. It's allowed us to uh, develop imagery which is interactive, um, it, it's animated, if, if you, um, it's very difficult to make analog holograms that are full color and um, with our light valve printer we take this, these multitude of, of two-dimensional images and we separate them into red, green and blue RGB files. Distinction between OCAD and, and other universities uh, has always been, in my view, this notion of being hands-on and, and making things with your hands. And, and so uh, my students are, I think, uh, if, if we do a good job, they are incredibly uh, happy in their role as students and fulfilled because they are making things that come from within. They're exhibiting their work and when they're good at it, they get a great deal of praise for that. And all of that pays into this uh, environment that is uh, really highly creative and, and engaged. The world is changing. We've, we've gone as far as we can go pushing electrons through a wire. We've done it about as fast as we can do it that the future of computing, uh, as with uh, communications technology, is something called photonics, the, the study of uh, coherent light and optics, and um, that having a leg up in that area would be, I think, would be a valuable thing for people in high school.